Welcome fellow Toastmasters and guests. This meeting of online presenters has now begun. Guests, please note that in order to be a member of our club, you must be a current or former active member of Toastmasters International and have completed at least six Toastmaster official speeches. If you have substantial relevant presentation experience, you may apply for membership after demonstrating your abilities in a two to three minute speech delivered during one of our club meetings. All requests for membership are subject to approval by the members of our club. If you have not already done so, please change your panel to ensure it shows your name and role if you have one. Right click and select rename to do so. We have members and guests from many countries throughout the world. Thus, as a professional organization, we ask that you please be aware of language or word usage that may be considered offensive or otherwise insensitive due to cultural differences. Please note that we will be recording the meeting. Your video or audio contribution may be used for club marketing purposes. Also, please mute your microphone when you're not speaking. Please welcome our club president, DTM, Andy, Andrew Byrne. You're, am I now speaker one? Carolina, you introducing me as a speaker? As president. As president, okay. Because we were yeah, as president. <laughs> we did that part already. So I. Uh, okay. I went back to you for you to introduce the Toastmaster of the day, which is Marianne, to take away the program. So I guess you want me to start, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, just before we get started, I would like to let everybody know that uh, our first speaker is not here. So Evaluator David Carr, uh, you have no one to evaluate, so you're off the hook on that one. Unless she shows up, we'll push you to the back of the line. And at this point, speaker two, Joni, you are speaker one. Maggie, you are evaluator one. Speaker three is Andrew Byrne, and evaluator two is Andre Smolenko. So just want to be clear before we get started. Uh, our theme tonight uh, was opposites. Now, I have a couple of quotes that are kind of related to opposites when it comes to a relationship. But uh, I wanted to read them to you and ask in the chat, did you find somebody who is your opposite? So the quotes are, the most exciting attractions are between two opposites that never meet. Andy Warhol. Another one is we are always seeking our opposite, whether we know it or not, whether we discover what that we can discover our arrogance. That's a little deep for me, Misho Kushi. And it's a simple law, which every writer knows of taking two opposites and putting them in a room together, Trey Parker. And the last one, but there is no energy unless there is the tension of opposites. Hence, it is necessary to discover the opposite to the attitude of the conscious mind. There's no author on that one. Now, I wanna get us right started with introducing our helpers for this evening. I have our awe counter as Carolina Ramirez. Please tell us what you're gonna be doing for us tonight, Carolina. Of course, today my role is a counter. I'll be counting your grants, like uh, mm, awkward sounds, etc. Back to you, Marianne. Our next helper is our grammarian, Sarah Idahan. Sarah, please let us know what you're doing tonight. Thank you, Marianne. As a grammarian, I will be listening for the word of the day. The word of the day is diametrically, it's an adverb. It means completely, utterly, which is another word for absolutely. So I'll be looking out for that word. Hopefully we can use it at least five times tonight. Back to you, Marian. Thanks, Sarah. Next, we have our watcher, who is our own Angela Heath. 
Hello, everybody. I'm the watcher. It just simply means that I am looking at you throughout the entire meeting, looking at your lighting, your positioning, whether you're drinking coffee or not, all of that. And I will report back at the end. Back to you, Miriam. We've had a change in our uh, agenda this evening. Natasha isn't here this evening. And Adrian has valiantly stepped to the plate and she is going to be our chat monitor. I'm gonna yield it, the position over to Rick. He uh, volunteered to take it. So Toastmaster Rick, if you would, wouldn't mind explaining your role, thank you. Certainly, I'm the chat monitor tonight. So I will be keeping an eyeball on everything that everybody's doing in chat. I uh, encourage everybody to be chatty tonight, but remember not to chat while people are speaking. Back to you, Marianne. Thanks, Rick. And our final helper of this evening is our vote counter, Jim Barber. Guess what he's gonna do? I will be happy to, Madam Toastmaster, my fellow Toastmasters. I am the vote counter this evening, and as the vote counter, I will be counting votes. That's no big deal. I've, over the last 30 years, I've been vote counter quite a few times. However, this is the first evening that I will be given the opportunity to use David Carr's fancy dancy magical voting machine that he has included as part of his, the website. Absolutely. So this is my first time. I hope everybody will be gentle with me as I fumble my way through it. But with any luck, we're going to be doing it electronically tonight. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jim. And now I realize that Pamela has joined us. So we're back into the original order now. Uh, Pamela, I would like you to just uh, let our timer know what your timing is tonight, because you have an unusual speech tonight. I created, a, I created a podcast for my project, and the project says two to three minutes. I created a podcast that went 11 minutes, so I'm not going to go through the entire podcast, but I could do a real short intro and then do, then stop it at seven. So it doesn't, it doesn't just go till seven minutes. It would go till, um, it goes to 11 and I think that's too long. So if that's okay with everyone and I could just truncate it at some point and. Okay. That sounds good to me. So just give me um, one minute and then eight minutes. I'll do a one minute intro. Okay, perfect. And I need to share the screen, please. Somebody please make that happen. I, I'm able to do it. I'm able to do it. Thank yeah. you. Share screen. Oh. Are we still doing tip of the day? Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. Yes, we are. Uh, our tip of the day is tonight by our VPE and charter president, Mr. David Carr. Please welcome David. All right. <clears throat> I mentioned that it's a good idea that everybody sign up and sign up in advance. It's also a good idea if you remember what it is that you signed up for, which uh, I, I remembered about 15 minutes ago that uh, I saw that, oh, I signed up to do tip of the day. Physical. And so uh, I, I do have something, something quickly to show you um just wanted to show you a little bit of uh, the features related to sending and exchanging email that are built into uh, our website and i will keep that uh, relatively brief but if you if you go into the the most important keys somebody's got uh, video audio and going in the background um if you go into our website, you won't see, most of you won't see all these different menus, but there is one called email that lists all these little aliases that have been set up for different uh, club officers. So you can write to, um, uh, well, it should be actually op hyphen president at toastmouse.org. Uh, and so on down the list. That's a little bit messed up there. <laughs> uh, maybe I should beg off doing a uh, tip of the day for this evening. Um, I'm going to come back and, and do it another time when I'm actually prepared. Uh, back David, to Toastmaster of the day. David, if it helps, it's a, it is showing up as OP dash president on my, when I look at it. Interesting. Okay. 
Um, well, not, and that it, hopefully everybody knows that you can send a member to the, uh, you can send a message to the rest of the club by writing to op at toastmos.org. So that is a, a handy feature built into our site. And, uh, but let me leave it at that for tonight. Okay, well, thank you, sir. Uh, our first speaker tonight is Pamela Benjamin, and Pam is speaking from the presentation Mastery Path, Level 4, Building Skills. Pamela would like to motivate you to be more fit. Tonight, her speech will be a short intro with a podcast after the fact, and it's titled Mobility and Aging Well. Please welcome Pamela Benjamin. Good afternoon online presenters and guests. My name is Pamela Benjamin. And I've become very, very interested in fitness, especially helping women and men become more fit or staying fit as they age. This video is for them to help them encourage them to be more active and fit and why they should be and the benefits. Aging inactivity hurts. It's a little bit soft, I think. So if you want to raise your volume, you might be able to hear it. I'm going to start it. Thank you. Physical fitness is not only one of the most important keys to a healthy body, but also the basis of dynamic and creative activity. John F. Kennedy said that before he was sworn in as president, in December of 1960, wait a minute, in a speech penned to the soft American. Hello, my name is Pamela Benjamin. I'm going to talk to you today about mobility as we age. As we age, it gets harder and harder if we are not active because our skin, our tendons, our ligaments become less elastic, which tend to lead to stiffer joints. I want to tell you a story about my grandma, Nellie. She was active with a garden and had a very large orchard. I'm going to start again. I don't, I, I think I, I misplaced it. It wasn't until it. her mid 90s that she became too fragile to do a lot of the work that she was forced to move. Okay. Did I lose you guys on the screen? I don't see anything on my screen. Okay. Because I got confused. Okay. Sorry. My screens are confusing me. So, share, and I'm not able to find my video. I'm not able to see it, even though I have it open. I don't know how, I don't know why I can't see it. I'm really sorry, I had this all set up. Why don't we uh, move ahead to speaker two and okay, uh, if you can figure it out, we'll put you right at the end. Okay, thank you. More for you. Okay. Ooh. Okay, can uh, you stop sharing now? So, sorry. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Um, our sp second speaker this evening is Joni Laidlaw. Joni is not only a member of Online Presenters, but a charter member for a Toastmasters club with a special focus of neurodivergent leadership. She's done expensive volunteer work to educate persons on and create more inclusive space for persons with disabilities, including her work with the Nathan Ebanks Foundation in her home country of Jamaica. She hopes to assist in reimagining the education space for, to facilitate all learning types. Joni's speech tonight is from Presentation Mastery Path Level One, Mastering the Fundamentals of Writing a Speech. Please welcome Joni Laidlaw to the virtual lectern with her speech, The A Stream Reimagined. Joni Laidlaw. Does anyone have pics? 
dog, cat, by any chance, throw up hands who has pets or their children has pets. Have you ever tried to teach a kitten or a puppy how to be a kitten or a puppy? I've tried to teach a kitten how to mouse, which is how to catch mice after taking them very small from their mother. What I did was I put the kitten to sit down behind the desk and I looked at the kitten and said, listen, you're going to take notes on what you have to do as a cat. And I gave them a book. I gave them a pencil. I had them write it down. I had them study what they had to do. Teach them how to build a mouth strap, build a better mouth. Wait, no, that's not what I did. That's what I had to do with my son. Why does that make me want to reimagine the A stream? Very simply put, I've never seen a mother dog putting their puppy down on a desk with a pen and a paper and having them intellectualize learning. I see them taking them, introducing them, and building from their fascination. In the same way when I had to be a kitten's mom, I would take the ball and I would hit it back and forth, and they would follow and from there learn how to cat. No two brains are diametrically the same. There are some different terms that I will be basically explaining to you, and I'm going to start with neurotypical. Now, in case you haven't heard what a neurotypical brain is, that's someone whose brain does not differ from the situational norm, meaning they learn great sitting and concentrating on the teacher and what is being said. There's also the neurodiverse model. No, that's the natural diversity of the human brain. Again, as I started saying, no two brains are diametrically the same. Initially, we thought of neurodivergence as it was this or this. But with time, we've come to realize it's actually a spectrum. A number of different things actually affect how you process, how you learn, how you view the world, and what you do. But our education system still groups us according to, okay, well, you're fast and you're slow, or you're able to pick it up easy. Why though? We've studied everything when it comes to education. There are tactile learners. There are visual learners. There are persons who are auditory learners. But have we ever thought about training persons based on how they learn? Unless it's an extreme situation in the case of ADHD, for those who don't know what ADHD is, it's Acquired Deficiency Hyperactive Disorder. That child is so disruptive, they're always making noise in class. Well, in females, how it works is she's very talkative, but there are actually superpowers that come along with this. For example, if someone has ADHD, they have something called hyperfocus. They will sit, they will find a topic. Did you know? that the Pratmen actually have names, the little ghosts have names. I found that out the hard way when my son got fixated on, guess what, Pratman. They will go so intricately and so deeply into what fascinates them that they will go beyond what you can imagine and just the regular of what's expected. Now, based on that, what happens is most times children are held to a higher standard. I mean, after all, if you're able to verbally communicate at a certain level, then a certain level of function is expected. However, sadly, with ADHD also comes certain executive dysfunctions. What are executive dysfunctions? It means you may actually want to. You can intellectualize doing it, but you have a problem with actually doing the work. I used to say to my son, you know, when you were seven years old, it was so much easier for me to get you to do things. And now that he's 11, I have been on his case until I started researching this topic. I realized that the brain function of my 11-year-old as it relates to his, his executive dysfunction is that his mind is actually working like a seven-year-old when it comes to doing things. And I stopped and I thought, 
when he was seven, I didn't expect certain things. When he was seven and I was teaching him or showing him things, I did it in a very different way, as did the system. But now that he's 11, I expect him to act like everybody says, an 11-year-old, a neurotypical 11-year-old. That puts him at a certain disadvantage because researching this, I learned his, his executive dysfunction is the same as a seven-year-old. And teaching him in the way that an 11-year-old would function actually doesn't serve him any benefit. What did I learn in all of this and what do I want to advocate? It's wonderful and great for us to consider the system the way it is because some people can swap and learn or wrote, say things over and over again, memorize and put it back on paper. But how does it affect these things? Planning and prioritizing, your flexible thinking, your helicopter view, your organization, your ability to do a task when required just because you can't. A lot of people take that for granted that in this space with all that is happening, dyslexia, anxiety, auditory processing, speech delays, cerebral palsy, that if it's not affected to a state where it's extreme to get tested, then it's not affected overall. I live in a country where I honestly believe that we have a society of dyscalculia, which is issue with numbers, and dyslexia, which affects our overall grades. But if it doesn't get too bad, we never test. And if we never test, we don't understand whether or not the education system is working to teach persons effectively. It's wonderful to get an A, but when you come out on the other side, if you're unable to function in regular society, as in overcome what occurred to you or isn't occurring to you, then I do believe we fail the next generation. It's why I want to reimagine the ACE dream. Back to you, Mr. Sasha, for this. That was super interesting, Joni. Thank you for that speech. Our next speaker is Mr. Andrew Byrne. He is going to be speaking from the Dynamic Leadership Level 3 Increasing Knowledge Path. In Mastering Skills, he's going to be working on vocal variety and body language. Andrew joined Toastmasters in 2012 and earned his DTM in 2016, and then he got another one in 2020. He's currently working on a third. He has been a lecturer, author, and coach, and he's currently a member of five clubs. He, he was a charter member of online presenters, and he served in club leadership positions, area, division, director, and he was a member of the D47 trio as the club growth director, receiving a TI award for his performance. He's also served in these roles at the district level, parliamentarian, DTM manager, co-chair of the DTM walk for 2022, and a chair of the corporate committee. He's helped two clubs become distinguished as a club coach and served as a club mentor for a newly created coach two times. While club growth director, more than 18 clubs were chartered and he served in the role of chair numerous TLIs and speech contests. Please welcome our fearless leader, Toastmaster in Chief, our club president, Andrew Byrne with his speech, Let's Catch. And this was inspired by the Field of Dreams. Please welcome Andy Byrne. Thank you very much, Marianne. How many people by a show of hands remember that movie, Field of Dreams, done 33 years ago in 1989. Some of you may not have even been born yet, but they do a lot of replays. What was the key message that you walked away with when you thought of that movie? For me, it was about the relationships between the main character and his father, who was deceased. And I want you to think about that in terms of your own family dynamics and your own father. Did you imagine having enough time with him before he left this earth? I want to reenact 
part of that movie, starting with the question where he's looking up and hearing something moving around in the field. And finally he sees his dad walking through the grass. And he says, Dad, Dad, is that you? And he answers, yes. Where am I? And the answer was, you're in my special field of dreams. It's 2022. Would you like to have a catch? He says, yes. We then go for our individual mitts and the ball, and we start throwing the ball and catching the ball, throwing the ball, catching the ball, and enjoying each other's company while asking questions. Asks, how's it been as you've been away? He says, well, I've been away but I've always been watching you. I've been looking out for you, enjoying all your accomplishments and what you've been doing. And I said to him, what have you been doing there? How is heaven? And he says, heaven is wonderful. And everything that you have heard about heaven is true. People really enjoy it. And the interesting thing is people talk about heaven all the time, but no one wants to pay the price to get there. We continue to talk for hours and remembering things from our past. And then just as suddenly as he appeared, he disappeared and made me think of all the things that I had wanted to do to prepare that encounter. But it came upon me suddenly. And there's a lot that I left unsaid. I want you to think about if you were in that situation, would you have been prepared to speak to a family member that had left? Asking yourself, would you be asking yourself this question? Would I have been spending more time with the ones that I loved or would I continue to have led my life the way I have? Because once it's over and that loved one has gone away, it's very hard to get that moment back. So it's very treasured and cherished, which is why people that enjoyed the movie enjoyed that component. So I want you to ask yourself, did you get enough time with that family member? What would you do differently? So I ask each of you to think about that question, and I'll ask you to think about that. And if anybody has some thoughts, what would you do differently, Rick, if all of a sudden a deceased family member that you were very fond of or loved came back to you for a short period of time, what would your discussions center around? In my case, it almost certainly would be to continue discussions that we were having up to the day that he died, um, because we spent a lot of time just talking about anything in general and everything in specific. So it would just be an extension of what we had already experienced. Okay. Deborah Carr, if you had that encounter, how would you envision it or imagine it? It would just be absolutely magnificent. I was fortunate to be with my with both my parents that I would probably want to call in first um, to their last, you know, to the last moment of their life. And I have very few re regrets whatsoever, but there's always something. It's a recipe or mom, how did you do this? Or dad, thank you so much for 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 baiting my hook when I was too little to and then teaching, but yet teaching me how to scale a fish. And there's the thank yous, I think more than anything that I would do is just be sure that to say those extra thank yous because they're so meaningful later. So that's what I would do. Part of this had me thinking about an event that took place for myself at one of my other clubs. 
and I had a club member, Kip Barkley, who I was a member of, of Club Voice, and we were together for about eight years. And on July 11th, he passed on. He was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer about a month beforehand, and it went very quickly. And you wonder, you know, is there something I could have done differently? Is there some way I would have changed the relationship or added to relationship other than to remember fondly that member? The relationships that each of us build in a community help us in terms of communicating, sharing, learning to speak better, help with our strategic communications, pausing, and all of those things that make communication valuable to individual members and make those members say, he listened to me. He listened when I talked. He understood what I was saying. Think about that, not to be too morbid, but communication has real value. And what we learn in Toastmasters has real value. Thank you very much, Toastmaster of the Day. Wow, you really got me thinking, Andy. That was really like, made me like introspect a little bit there. Uh, Pamela, will you be able to give your speech this evening? I have uploaded it to YouTube, so I think it's going to work. Okay. I'll try well, again. I won't go through the intro again. Here's Pamela. I want to encourage all of you to be fit as you age. This is my call to action, and I hope it encourages you. Physical fitness is not only one of the most important keys to a healthy body, but also the basis of dynamic and creative activity. John F. Kennedy said that before he was sworn in as president in December of 1960 in a speech penned to the soft American. Hello, my name is Pamela Benjamin. I'm going to talk to you today about mobility as we age. As we age, it gets harder and harder if we are not active because our skin, our tendons, our ligaments become less elastic which tend to lead to stiffer joints. I wanna tell you a story about my grandma, Nellie. She was active with a garden and had a very large orchard for most of her life. It wasn't until her mid nineties that she became too fragile to do a lot of the work that she was forced to move out of her home. Before that though, she had massive gardens in her, on her farm and later on in her town at home. Most of her food came from the garden or her livestock. I remember being a little girl and going to the farm and helping her pick a lot of the vegetables before dinner and helping with the orchard when the apples were ready, pulling them off the trees and making applesauce and apple pie. The sweet corn, the beans, the gourds, but especially the strawberries were just incredible. Somehow they tasted better when my grandmother made them, put a little sugar on them and put them on top of vanilla ice cream. One thing that I remember being when I was a little girl was so happy to see all of that. Life has changed since my grandma came to America in the early 1900s. The world's become a very different place. So many people have moved from rural parts of America to the cities. We are a different people. Not only have they moved from different places, we are seeing the effect of inactivity all around us, but especially in those Americans who are aging, those Americans who are 50 and older. I wanna to talk to you about inactivity and how it hurts and what you can do about it. Inactivity and aging have a dramatic effect on our bodies, but also on our wallets. Did you know that? 
The CDC said that non-institutionalized adults or adults who are not in the hospital or in nursing homes spend about 860 billion a year on healthcare. 860 billion. And this is not even the people who are the sickest in nursing homes or in chronic care in hospitals. This represents the aging population that live in at home. But you know what the saddest part about all of this is? So much of it could have been prevented. That's right. The CDC says that they estimate four out of five or 80% of chronic complications from people could have been prevented or could be reduced with activity, 80%. So look around next time you're in a group of people who are 50 and older. In that group, eight out of 10 people live in pain or in a condition that could have been or may be able to be corrected with activity. So I'd like to encourage you to think about ways you can change to be one of the 20%. One of the things they also said that a little mobility is so much better than no activity at all. So what do they recommend? They recommend at least 150 minutes or 2.5 hours of moderate activity per week. 2.5 hours? We all have two to three hours we can invest in ourselves, not other people, but ourselves, don't we? If you've had a leg injury or a back injury or something that's causing you not to be fit, I'm sure your physician can help you think of ways that you can still maintain the muscles that you have. If you are still mobile, I wanna encourage you to get outside and move or else find a room in your home that you can move the furniture around a little bit or use the space to do moderate activity during the week. You can do so many different things and I'm gonna go more in detail, but there's weights, kettlebells, bands, and all of these will increase your resistance in your workout. If you decide to start walking, you don't have to walk fast. You can find a nice, cool path to walk on and maybe even invite friends to come along. But if you need more work, try jogging. You'll sweat more and burn a few more calories. You'll need good walking shoes, but specifically for jogging, you wanna be fit. You want your shoes to fit and you wanna make sure that they fit correctly. Your goal will always be to get your heart rate up a little bit. You don't want it to skyrocket. You want it just to be up a little bit so that you can comfortably talk to yourself or you're just able to breathe gently. If you start to become really, um, your, your activity, your heart rate starts to go up and you're breathing quite fast, you can just slow down. You don't have to walk at a certain speed. There's no one that says you have to go fast. All of this is about moderate activity to become fitter, not to hurt yourself. But if your goal is to get fitter and you don't wanna walk and you don't wanna run, how about dancing? A lot of people like to dance and it's a great way to talk to more people and to get your heart rate up. Tennis or badminton, They'll strengthen your muscles and improve your balance and agility. That is really a helpful thing as you age. Golfing is another favorite activity. And it's just not about hitting the golf ball, but also you can carry your clubs and even work out when you're carrying the clubs because you don't have to put everything in the cart and ride over the greens. You can walk the course or you can walk part of the course. But if you have sore hips or knees, what about cycling? It's an excellent way to get outside without causing a lot of impact to your hips and knees. You can gradually build up your endurance and there's many, many types of bikes you can try out. 
During COVID, there was a boom in cycling. It was hard to buy a bike because so many people were getting outside on them. This boom has just continued. People are now able to buy bikes but there's so many different kinds and styles that you would really have fun if you found the bike that really fit your purpose or Thank you, everyone. Oh, thank you, Pamela. I'm inspired. I think I'm gonna pull the bike out of the garage. I walk every day, but uh, I could use a little more. Thank you. Now I'm going to ask all of you to vote for your favorite speaker of the night. So you just heard Pamela Benjamin, we had Joni Laidlaw, and we also had Andrew Byrne. Please, um, I guess, look for the link in the chat. Is that right, Jim? As soon as I can figure out how to do that, yes, that is right. Alrighty, and now we're moving right along and I am going to ask you to put your hands together for Adrian Williams. She is going to be our table topics master this evening and um, I can't wait to see what she's got in store for us. Adrian. Hello Toastmasters and guests. It is my pleasure at this time to entertain you. The purpose of the table topic section is I will be asking you to speak on a topic and can we please have the timers report, please? In terms of timer report, you asking for the speaking parameters or yes. report from the speaker? Okay, very good. Table topics, one to two minutes. Green at one minute, yellow at one and a half, red at two minutes, 30 second deviation. You'll see me do something like this. <laughs> Back to you. I love it, I love it. And the first person that I'm gonna call is Hector Carrera. Can you please unmute? And I'm going to show you something that's diametrically opposite from one another. And I would like for you to take our theme from tonight, which is opposites, and tell us a story, whatever you like. Here is your image. Oops. OK, <laughs> here is your image. I'm going to be like that. I can't see the shirt, but okay, perfect. Okay, can you see it? Yes, I can, Madam Table Topics Master. There you go. Can you put it back for uh, another second or so? If you would please. I think I saw opulence and uh, a destitute. Yes, that's what you saw. Okay, well, thank you for this opportunity. I don't know if I have to tell you a story, make up a story and talk about my past. And I'd rather choose to do that because it's something I lived through. And uh, to be honest, it's one of the experiences that mark my life the most. And I am more grateful for it. Going from an um, I wouldn't say opulent, but um, upper middle class upbringing in my little hometown in Puebla and being sent to the United States for the exchange student year to the Rotary organization to come back to Mexico after one year and find out my father had lost everything in the dragon crisis, I'm sorry, the tequila crisis in Mexico. Uh, due to some uh, economic conditions and uh, bad timing for a loan and not having enough money to eat or not knowing where I was going to go to college or actually not have a penny. And going from that experience that it, what I couldn't think of more diametrically opposed and uh, finding a way to get back on track and, and, and make it to where I am today, which again, I'm not in opulence, but I'm living in the wealthiest country in the world for through a, a whole um, ordeal and a great a fortune that I had. Um, I will leave you with that, that little tidbit of my history and uh, prepare you for my next speech, I hope. But 
that taste of going from opulence to destitute back to a middle class position has been the most incredible journey I can think of. Thank you, Madam Topic Masters. Thank you. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. That was amazing to hear. You just never know what people have to tell. Our next table topics person will be Toastmaster Rosina Duncanson. Here is your opposite. And just to make sure I have this correct, I'm going to tell you a story based on that, what you just shared. Yes. All right. So think about it. It is summertime and the heat just seems to bring this thickness over our eyes. You see the steam rising from the road and you see you know the ice cream just melting quickly but when you think about ice cream it's not at all see-through it's got this beautiful color vanilla strawberry hmm what else is a good favorite mango or pineapple because i'm in the caribbean these are things that are not see-through. And so for me, when it comes to the summertime and the heat, I'd rather something that's not see-through. Give me ice cream. Don't give me water. Give me something sweet. Back to you, Table Topics Master. You know, after that message, I feel like I need some ice cream. And guess what? I have butter pecan in my freezer. And as soon as we're done, I will have some opaque butter pecan. Our next speaker is going to be Toastmaster Rick Durling. And here is your item. Above pool, below pool. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters. There is little question that pools are an absolutely wonderful experience in the summer. What better way to spend an hour or two reading a book than to be in a pool while the temperature outside is 100 and the humidity is 90 or 100? It's a great way to beat the heat. I, there's very little question that an in-ground pool is very different than one that's above ground. The in-ground pool certainly is easier to get into. You certainly don't have to climb a ladder, but in both cases, you do have to climb out of the pool one way or another. As an opposite, typically, an in-ground pool is probably a little bit more expensive, but the maintenance is pretty much the same. So it's extremely difficult to decide which one you might want. I will say this much, having an in-ground pool gives you an opportunity in the colder climates to turn that into an ice rink, which is not very possible when you are having an above ground pool. So definitely, for those of us that live in northern climates where it gets well below zero and a pool can freeze, an in-ground pool will serve you far better as an ice rink than one that is above ground. Back to you. Wow, that would be nice to be a part of an ice rink in your backyard. That would open up a whole nother party. I, we don't have that option here in Florida and Miami. It doesn't get cold enough for the water to freeze. Our next table topics, and I believe you will have to put in the chat if we have time for one after this one. Toastmaster Deborah Carr, here is your image. Just recently, I found out that I I'm a candidate for a new hip. 
and it's a hip joint. And it's been quite, quite interesting because I put it off for two years. So <clears throat> even today, when I'm doing the pre-op work that you have to do, and it's going to be in October, then the heel slide, everybody said you have to do the heel slide. If you do the heel slide, you're going to make it and it's going to be, your legs will be even. The surgeon will have a better, better chance with it because that one works on different, you know, it's so intense. So as I laid in bed this morning, I'm screaming absurdities and nasty words as I did my heel slides and some of the other exercises. And they're not easy to do. They are hard very hard to do. And then this afternoon, naturally, you know, I had to double book myself. So I was, I had in-person physical therapy, which last time was quite easy because it was my first appointment. So meet and greet and he shows you a couple things to do at home. He worked me today and I went in thinking this is going to be easy. Well, not easy, but you know, I know I'm going to get beaten up a little bit at some point, but he had me squawking a little bit but then as it kept working, as those muscles kept working, it just got easier and easier and easier. So what's really hard and what's really easy? You just take the good and the bad and you do it. Madam Topic Master. Wow, that is something that is definitely <laughs> easy to understand that the duality of what you have to decide on going through a journey of change. Our next table topics is going to go to Toastmaster Angela Heath. And just one moment. I don't know if you can tell what this is, but it is a hurricane versus or tornado. Hello, Toastmasters. I was born in Ohio. And tornadoes was, they were an every season occurrence. In fact, we lived in the valley and we could watch the tornadoes go across the seven hills of Cincinnati. When I was small, I thought it was fun. My mom would say, kids, get inside. I would say, no, mom, let us see the twister. We want to see the twister. The foolishness of a child. I've never been in a hurricane, but my niece has been in a hurricane and she's also been in tornadoes. And so she tells me that they're both pretty much the same. They seem opposite in some ways, but the force of wind, the rain, the thunder, the lightning, it's all the same. It's a path of destruction overturned trees, fear, and many other things that no one likes. Tornado or hurricane, I don't want either one. Back to you, Topics Master. I never knew you grew up with uh, tornadoes. I haven't been in a tornado, but you know, I can't imagine the tornadoes originating on ground versus possibly in the water. So that would be something totally different. So thank you so much, everyone. Back to our fellow Toastmaster. I'm sorry, may we have the time, please? And then if you will vote for your favorite table topics first. Sure, Madam Topics Master. I posted all the times in the chat, everyone qualified. Okay, perfect. Back to you, Miss Madam Toastmaster of the day. Thank you, Adrian. That was really fun and keeping right on theme. Thank you for that uh, well-prepared table topics segment. Now we're going to move on to the gift of feedback, which is to me one of the most valuable things that we get from our meetings. And tonight our evaluation segment will be led by our general evaluator, Ms. Kim Leeming. Kim, take the stage. Thank you, Toastmaster of Day, Marianne, fellow Toastmasters, and dear guests. As Marianne mentioned, my name is Kim Leeming, and it's my pleasure to be your general evaluator for tonight. I'll be evaluating tonight's meeting. I'll be talking about 
the great things that happen tonight, as well as those things that are diametrically opposed to what is expected of an advanced Toastmaster club. What an awesome evening we're having. We are now entering, as Marianne said, the ed educational part of the meeting. A big reason for why online presenters is so successful in transforming speakers into even more confident and competent speakers is the wonderful and actionable feedback each speaker receives from their evaluators. With this feedback, the speakers and everyone else watching can use this input to improve their speaking capabilities and in turn, bring more value to their audiences. My role is divided into three parts tonight. One is to introduce the evaluators for the prepared speeches. Two is to introduce tonight's, reintroduce tonight's assistants and ask for their respective reports. And finally, I'll give my general evaluation of the overall meeting. Before we start with the evaluations, could I please ask the timer for today, Lou Brown, to remind us of the timing requirements for the evaluator speeches. Take it away, Lou. Thank you, Madam General Evaluator. Evaluations are two to three minutes. I will flash the green light at two minutes, yellow at two and a half, red at three, and then around 3.30, I will do something like this so that you know you are past the grace period. Back to you, Madam GE. Thank you, Lou. So the first evaluator for tonight is actually the third evaluator for tonight. So let me start. Uh, our, our, our first evaluator is actually Maggie Lou. She will be evaluating speaker number one, Jody Renee Layla. Please welcome Maggie. Hi, good morning and good evening, to uh, Longland Toastmaster members. Um, tonight, I'm revaluing uh, Johnny's speech. It's surprising because both Johnny and I, we have just joined Online Toastmaster Club one month ago. And Johnny had been my first evaluator last month, and now it's my turn to evaluate Johnny. I find it very interesting. Um, so tonight, Johnny's speech, I believe it was a very passionate um, and Johnny has brand, uh, brought lots of energy into the speech. Um, there are certainly lots of uh, knowledge um, pieces in her speech. I definitely related to the speech because um, I had two colleagues, both of them have the ADHD children. Um, they've been very honest to me. They share lots of their personal stories, their uh, struggles, you know, what happened in the school because they, um, the children are still in a normal school. They don't want to try to special school yet. So I can definitely feel the pain. Um, I mean, I didn't encourage and raise them because they're all working mothers. Like, you know, just be more patient. They're still little, they're still young, but I know it's very struggle. For them, and I'm very happy that Johnny has bring attention to this. You know, the the brain development and how we're looking looking children at a different way. Um, so Johnny has used her body language very well, and also lots of the facial expressions, the uh, the voice varieties. I think everyone can agree with me. Um, Johnny also used very attractive presentation skills showing us the colorful and the interesting slides when she speaks. So um, for some of the people maybe not really familiar with those uh, technical words, we'll be able to catch up those words and maybe try to do some research or Google and try to have um, a little bit more understanding after the speech. So I think the speech is very um, structured and well-planned speech. So what you want to work on, I think maybe try to eliminate background noise and improve the audio qualities because we can definitely hear something at the background. We're not sure it's the, you know, the earring tangling or something. So I think if you can improve that, that will make the speech much better. And also to challenge yourself, I suggest you to slow down a bit because whenever you talk about some like a let's thought or, you know, look at this and we all just try to, you know, catching up. Because your, your voice was very fast. So I think if you can slow down a bit, um, then we will have time to consume the information and have a better understanding of your speech. Um, that's all from my evaluation. Back to you, uh, general evaluation. Thank you, Maggie. Our second evaluator tonight is Andre Smolenko. 
he will be evaluating speaker number two, Andy Byrne. Take it away, Andre. Thank you very much, Madam General Evaluator, fellow online presenters, guests, and most importantly, Andrew. What an incredibly powerful, inspiring, and thought-provoking speech. Andrew, you are working on dynamic leadership uh, pathway and uh, its introduction to variety, vocal variety, and body language speech. Clearly, you are accomplished public speaker and a leader. It shows throughout your speech. It, your speech had clear opening, the body, and conclusion. Overall, something that I really, really like in your speech is that you dedicated substantial amounts of your speech to asking audience questions and listening. That's really, really important in my way because as we know, sometimes we just rush through and don't let people finish answering the question. Andrew did that masterfully. Vocal variety was in the speech, also a body language as well. And something again that really struck me, uh, Andrew, as the speaker, tr always trying to educate the audience, always trying to educate us. As in this speech, he gave an example of the movie that he watched. And that movie about um, you know, a son who had a chance in life to catch up with his deceased dad. What a powerful and very audience appropriate hook. And then letting us to process slowly that thing. I think Andrew is one of the masters of giving the audience that thinking space without rushing things through. So for us personally, for me, to understand how the speech works and what the key message, think the valuable time you have is there. At the same time, there are a few recommendations I would like to make to Andrew, which is not easy. However, what I noticed during your speech, you were looking down the screen. Your camera was right here, but you were looking down the screen for a prolonged periods of time. Perhaps from time to time, you could just oh, remind yourself and look at the audience. Two, hands gestures. You kind of, you use your hands at the beginning of the speech and then right before the end, probably just reminding yourself, oh yes, it's the hands gestures. Need to get it into it. If you could use it a bit more fluently during the speech, talk to us with your hands. I think something I would challenge you, Andrew. Overall, insightful, personally for me, and I'm sure for all of us, the question, what would we do? And you achieve your, your, um, you know, your targets in this speech. I congratulate you on starting and continuing with your new passage. I look forward to your new more speeches. Back to you, Madam uh, General Valerita. Thank you, Andre. The third evaluator for tonight is David Carr. He will be evaluating speaker number three, Pamela Benjamin. Please welcome David. Thank you, General Evaluator, fellow Toastmasters, and especially Pamela. You know, I think of this as being sort of an exception to the rule speech, because my rule is, I don't want to spend a lot of time looking at recorded material. I want to see you live in these meetings, uh, what you can pull off in a live presentation. But this is a project where the point is to produce a podcast, to produce a recorded and polish presentation and to share that with us, as well as maybe a little bit about the process of creating it, but also for us to let you see the thing that you have crafted. Now, a podcast is sort of inherently an audio presentation, but it's actually not uncommon for podcast to be put up on YouTube as well with some kind of visual presentation to go along with it. So I thought that one of the things that you did particularly well was pick out some visuals that added to the presentation for people who might be watching while still not relying on those, not making those, you know, central. You didn't have to see those things 
we could have just been listening to you and gotten the effect of the presentation of the topic that you're presenting on. Also, I think that you did a good job of having a conversational, encouraging tone. And that's probably important when you're talking about exercise. You don't necessarily want to be scolding people about all the stuff that they haven't been doing and all their interactivity. Or maybe I'm just obsessing over that because I'm one of those people who is not as active as he ought to be. Um, and I have the, the aching back to, to prove it on some days. So you did a good job of taking a topic that is relevant to all of us who aren't as young as we used to be uh, and want to be aging a little bit more gracefully, talking about some of the things that, such as low impact exercises, the bicycling, the even golfing, uh, but not doing all your golfing from a golf cart. So I thought it was a strong, encouraging speech, you know, things to work on, maybe working on smoother presentation of the audiovisual experience, practicing that, having that down. I'm not in the best position to criti criticize on that tonight because I've messed up some things myself, but, uh, one of the things that we need to work on is being as smooth as we can be about uh, how we use the technology and present with it effectively. Madam General Evaluator. Thank you, David. Now, could I please call on our timer, Lou, to give us the timer's report for evaluations tonight? Take it away, Lou. Thank you, Madam GE. All the times I've been posted to the chat, everybody qualified. Thank you, Lou. As you heard, all three of tonight's evaluators qualified with the timing for their evaluations. So thanks in advance to everyone for casting your votes now for best evaluator for tonight's meeting. And if you haven't yet done so, please also cast your vote for best speaker and best table topics. Next, we'll be introducing, reintroducing tonight's team of Toastmasters who helped run tonight's meeting so smoothly. They will each give their one minute reports. First up is our grammarian, Sarah Idahan, with her report. Please welcome Sarah. Thank you, Madam General Evaluator. Our word tonight was diametrically, adverb completely and utterly. It was used four times. Joni used it twice, Hector used it once, and Kim used it once. So we got four uses tonight, a little one short, and maybe we'll do better next time. Back to you, Madam General Evaluator. Thank you, Sarah. Next up is our watcher. Tonight's watcher is Angela Heath. Please take it away, Angela. All right, guys, I was watching you the entire night and I saw a lot of interesting things. Generally speaking, we look good. We have great lighting, we center, generally speaking. But I am finding more often people are turning off their videos, such as moi to drink various items such as wine and coffee and tea and so on and so forth. And I'm also noticing that a lot of people are doing a lot of things with their hands on their faces. So with that being said, I would like to present some special awards for tonight. If I can get this to work. Okay, so Carolina and Marianne, I'm sorry I picked you guys out, but you're just um, an example of everybody looking to the side, looking up, looking down. I just picked you out because I could grab it really quick. I'm giving a special award to Joni for all of her various dress attire changes. I'm giving a special award to Kim for always having the background that goes along with the theme, for Maggie for just looking beautiful, and Andy to me has the best look of all. Lighting, centering, background, just absolutely gorgeous. And Sarah, I'm giving you an award because you were the best person for anybody to present with. You were listening, nodding your head, smiling. Oh, just so enchanted. Good job. Back to you. 
Thank you, Angela. Next up is our awe counter, Carolina Ramirez. Carolina, please take it away. You did a, a great job. Let me show you the report. We have a, we had a couple of so one well during the table topic section. And during the evaluation section, we had five um from Maggie and one so and one you know uh, for Andre to a uh, and for David one you know at the beginning. That's my report. Back to you, Miss G. E. Thank you, Carolina. Next up is our chat monitor, Rick Durling. Please welcome Rick. Good evening, everyone. I really think uh, our chat today was pretty quiet. Not a lot being said. A few hints and tips from, from Andy, and that's about it. Back to you. That was quick. Thank you so much. It is now time for the general evaluation portion of the meeting. What a show. Three great speakers, three awesome evaluators, and a very fun table topic session. The timing for our meetings is something that online presenters take seriously. Tonight's meeting is no exception. It looks like we will end on time. So thanks to all for making that happen. As a relatively new member of less than a year, um, I just wanna mention that I, I just am so impressed with online presenters overall and everything is just wonderful. And I am so excited to be taking on a role. And uh, the table topics master of the day today was Adrienne Williams. Typically my response here to hearing the table topics portion of the meeting starting is say to myself, don't pick me please. For all, don't pick me. But with Adrienne's questions tonight, I found myself wishing that I didn't have a role so I could have answered some table topics. It was a wonderful session. Thank you very much. Great job, Adrienne. Um, as you know, tonight's speakers have already been evaluated, but I'd still like to say the quality of the speeches and the evaluations is nothing short of phenomenal. Thanks to all for a job very well done. Both the speakers and evaluators demonstrated strong body language, eye contact, and vocal variety. And I know we're running short, so I'm going to hand this back to our Toastmaster of the day, Marianne. Thank you. Well, thank you, General Evaluator Kim. Wonderful job this evening. Now, uh, I would ask our vote counter, Jim Barber, to announce our winners for this evening. With pleasure, Madam Toastmaster. I have posted it in the chat to make it official, but the results are in reverse order. Our best evaluator was Andres Malenko. Our best table topics response was given by Hector Cabrera. And our best speaker of this evening was the one and only Dr. Andrew Byrne. Thank you, Jim. And as Kim mentioned, we are running short on time. So I am going to pass it right back to our president, Mr. Andrew Byrne. Thank you very, very much, Marianne. You led always this night as well as many others. Fantastic Toastmaster of the day. And just to remind you that if you arrange an evaluation that leading a meeting is a level four project online meeting so just remember that for for now and for others that are doing uh, toastmaster of the day the last thing is really to get a straw poll i know this is not the entire club but a straw poll we have the ability not only with zoom but if we wanted to go even further with restream of doing what they do in television on occasion they do live shows as opposed to taping the show cutting it and then sending it out after it's been cut would you want to consider at all live simultaneous broadcasting with the capabilities that we have either with restream or what zoom gives us uh, the capability of uh, doing uh, at least three or four different channels at the same time, whether it's YouTube or Facebook or a few others. Would you consider yourself less self-conscious about doing that on occasion or you want to not do that at all? 
anybody want to re uh, to do this live with multiple places that we're sending it out to? I'm curious as to what um, is the value you think that will come from this activity? Well, right now, and then David could correct me, right now I know for, for the clubs that I do the taping for, we put it in private messages and we don't have it uh, sent out so that everybody could access it. Uh, the question is, if we had an occasional meeting go out live to these other channels simultaneously, would that generate additional traffic to our site? Would it generate additional potential membership to our site? And I don't know the answer to that question. For those that are doing it currently in their own clubs, is it bringing in new members or not? Or do you want to keep this a safe zone and not have it go out unless it's been pre-edited. Go ahead, Kim, you had your, uh, Angela, you had your hand up. I would vote for simulcast if people are notified in advance so we can put on our best do and backgrounds and so on and so forth and so that we just look gorgeous and don't mind people seeing us live. But I think that if it does go, because we can, if we use something like, you know, Restream or any of them, we could go to Facebook page uh, and YouTube at the same time in any place else we would wanna go. But I think oh. we just need advance notice. YouTube, YouTube makes sense to me, but our own Facebook page, I mean, people who know us already are there. Like that wouldn't to me attract new people. So, I mean, if we're going to platforms that where we are not currently, I think that makes more sense. I, I, I guess the one advantage of it um, is that when you go live on Facebook, for, for example, people do people who happen to be on Facebook on that moment uh, who may not have made arrangements to come to our meeting will get a pop up saying that online presenters is uh, going live from their page uh, if they if they followed our page I mean I, I don't necessarily see that that it's gonna um, you know ha have a huge payoff I, I would I would tend to think it, it would be good to do for a special event for a, a workshop where as Angela says we can all be on our best game and and we should plan some special events, some workshops uh, mm -hmm. in in the in the coming months, when we maybe maybe we bring in a guest speaker, or we encourage one of our one of our own to uh, step up their game. But to to do something a little bit beyond the ordinary uh, would be a good idea, and to make sure that we're all on our game for that that meeting. <laughs> um, Thanks, David. So super Can quick, Carolina said she's going to stop the recording. Adrienne mentioned it. Lou mentioned it. We all agree. Can we stop the recording for tonight? And thank you very much, Carolina.